The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Here is Shep O'Neill with the story. True, nervous, very, very nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed them. Above all, it was the sense of hearing. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in the underworld. How then am I mad? Observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had the eye of a bird, a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell on me, my blood ran cold. And so, very slowly, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and free myself of the eye forever. Now this is the point. You think that I am mad. Madmen know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely and carefully I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, late at night, I turned the lock of his door and opened it, oh, so gently. And then, when I had made an opening big enough for my head, I put in a dark lantern, all closed, that no light shone out. And then I stuck in my head. I moved it slowly, very slowly, so that I might not interfere with the old man's sleep. And then, when my head was well in the room, I undid the lantern just so much that a single thin ray of light fell upon the vulture eye. And this I did for seven long nights, but I found the eye always closed. And so it was impossible to do the work, for it was not the old man who was a problem for me, but his evil eye. On the eighth night, I was more than usually careful in opening the door. I had my head in and was about to open the lantern when my finger slid on a piece of metal and made a noise. The old man sat up in bed, crying out, Who's there? I kept still and said nothing. I did not move a muscle for a whole hour. During that time, I did not hear him lie down. He was still sitting up in the bed, listening, just as I have done, night after night. Then I heard a noise and I knew it was the sound of human terror. It was the low sound that arises from the bottom of the soul. I know the sound well. Many a night, late at night, when all the world slept, it has welled up from deep within my own chest. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt, and I felt sorry for him, although I laughed to myself. I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first noise when he had turned in the bed. His fears had been, ever since, growing upon him. When I had waited a long time, without hearing him lie down, I decided to open a little, a very very little crack in the lantern. So I opened it. You cannot imagine how carefully, 
carefully. Finally, a single ray of light shot from out and fell full upon the vulture eye. It was open, wide, wide open, and I grew angry as I looked at it. I saw it clearly, all a dull blue with a horrible veil over it that chilled my bones. But I could see nothing else of the old man's face or person, for I had directed the light exactly upon the damned spot. <laughs> 